Good morning, still mild. It's pretty foggy and misty today. There's my wee pet calf. How you doing, pal? Hey! Come on. Hydraulic pipe, need to fit this onto the bale grab. So a while ago, there was a pipe on the stone grate broke. Kev took a pipe off of the bale grab to keep him moving. So I need to fit that today. I'm gonna to put this onto the stone grate, put the one that's on the stone grate back onto the grab, which is over there, because we need to shift some bales here today. And I'm needing this tractor. So I'll get it off the sprayer and I can use it to shift bales. Leave the sprayer behind, which has had the pump rebuilt, new diaphragms. Change of hitch so we can get the flatbed on. Right, off to yard one. Actually, I think there's a strap in the Land Rover I need to get. Off to yard one again. Flatbed acquired. That plow should be disappearing today, as well as the Kubota. Kev's going to put the old plow on, go do some plowing. need to put a quick coupler on this end so it'll go into the spool there. All right, I loaded these, loaded up along the road to yard number two because we're out of straw along there. Strut them down, shift them along the road, job done. Not had a coat yet for that. Brought up a fair amount of gutters for the forklift. Right, this can come off again. There's a wee dimple there. You have to line up the indent with it. There you go. Need to clear a space up in here because the bruiser's coming today to bruise 12 tonne of barley. Although I could do with using it, I've just made a right mess of the yard when I was coming up from the bales. A shopper needing a box of logs, so we'll grab one here. We've got a log burner in the shop. Just trying to line up these forks without wiping out a box. There we go. They just go into this shed. Logs usually go in here, but it's a bomb site in here, so I'm just getting rid of some boxes. I think I can just pick this off of here with this. I should be able to. Getting in here is not as easy. A bit narrow. Mind the roof. Getting rid of a couple of old pallets. Goodbye. Plow still not been picked up. Could have used it today. Kev's away plowing today. Right, wood chips a go. So take this flatbed off. Brakes and lights. Drop it off. We'll just dump this here for now. Go and get some wood chip for that. Trailer. Good to go. One thing I need to do is swap these wheels around each side because the front wheel's kind of in the middle of the trailer. So it pivots quite nicely and the back one drags so they wear quicker. We've swapped them about. Right, air brakes are just filling up. Agricar just phoned me, so they're dealers of Kuhn. And um, we're trying to get a hold of a Kuhn plow. So they've got one in at the moment, but it's going away tomorrow morning. So I've just phoned Kev. He's going to take off the lemkin that he's plowing with just now. Go in, pick up that plow, and go and have a fiddle with it. The, um, the kind of demo guy, the setup guy, isn't kicking about today. So we'll just have to fiddle about ourselves and see how we get on but hearing quite a lot of good things about the Kuhn one. So once we've demoed this, we've demoed a Kuhn, a KV and a Lemkin, all on land and in furrow, plows. And then it's the dealer's sales pitches. Our plow metal's more expensive, but it lasts better. Our plow metal's cheaper, but does it last? Oh God, it's a minefield. Anyway, we'll go and pick up some wood chip. <laughs> Got bales to shift, but um, I want to see the plow going, so we'll do a bit of both. I'm getting all the sales pitches from the dealers. It's a, it's a headache. I'm rubbish with that stuff. I just get told one thing and get swayed one way, and then another dealer says something else, and you sway the other way. Of those three, we've not had the coat for the KV, but I imagine the KV will be definitely most expensive. Then Lemkin and Kuhn are coming up roughly the same price. There was quite a lot of discrepancy in the prices between KV's got a lot cheaper plow metal versus the Kuhn somewhere in the middle and then Lemkin's quite expensive. But then does that does that Lemkin plow metal last better? I don't know. Bit of a minefield, but if you have got any 
information on plough metal, the wearability versus the different ploughs, then let me know down below. Are you, let me know your opinions. We'll put three dog biscuits in a row and we'll get Lulu to pick. On the way bridge now, we'll get a tear weight and we'll head round that direction to the dry bay for about five tonne of wood chip. Right, we're ready for chip. This stuff. Job done. I'll just hit the brakes a few times to level it off a bit. They have some absolute belters down here. Look at the size of that. Here's my hand for scale. Here's an even bigger one. Hand again for scale. Don't fancy having to cut all these with a chainsaw. There we go, 5.2 ton. Dad's on two wheels. Bruiser's here in that shed bruising, so Dad's been filling him up. Is it gonna rain? Is it gonna rain? If it's not gonna rain, I'm gonna dump them outside, right here on that edge of the shed. I'll just dump them right there, and then I've got a place to pick them up. No bother, because there's not masses of room in the shed. That's why we concreted right up to these panels, so we can dump wood chip, dump stones, dump whatever. Handy bit to scoop off of. KV plough's gone, they must have been to pick it up. Bruiser's getting there, there's probably uh, six, eight ton being done now. We do 12 ton. 14 ton actually. Just realised we'll take two ton off for the cows and that won't have minerals, that won't have protein source through it. Um, so we're going to do 14 ton, that'll leave 12 to mix with two ton of protein pellets from the rapeseed meal. There we go. Dead tree carcass. Right, I'm going to take this along to your two, dump it off just so it's out the road. Dad's starting to shift this, so when we come back, this will be gone. I forgot to film the gone bit. The coon plough kev's just struggling, the fence not playing ball. It should pop up on that screen when you plug in the ice bus, but it's not doing it. So the fen boy's coming out to have a look. Right, we've got a pipe to fix. Let's get some tools. It was a while ago now, but the pipe broke on the stone grape, so Kev nicked one off of here to fix it while, while he was ploughing. That bit goes on there. Thread your bandit. I'll oh, put this down. There we go, first time. Obviously it looks like I've um, wet myself, but I've spilled oil everywhere. Right, this is a coupler that goes on the other end of the pipe. The fence not playing ball with that plough, so I need to go and take a new Holland. If we want to try it on demo, that won't work if I push it the wrong way. There we go. Hopefully this comes off and this goes on there. Click! 50 newton meters, bang on. Right, pipe fitted again. Let's go back along the road. Switch tractors from this one to the other New Holland. Go try and pick up a plough. Oh, bloody hell, what a faff. Don't know why the fence stopped playing ball. Really winding me up. Right, new tractor. Next stop, Agricar to hopefully pick up a coon plough. Agricard deal in New Holland, so they tried a New Holland on the Coon and it worked, the ice of us popped up, no bother. So I don't know what the fence is playing at, it's not playing ball. This is the Coon plough, attempt two on this tractor, everything's going wrong. We tried that one, Fent boy's been out, needs plugged in to have a software update. Batteries died on this. We've jumped the tractor, it's going again, we're going to try this plough, but it's not on any spools, so we've not got the right setup. But we need a return, which we've plugged into a spool, it's a bit janky, we'll see what happens. Right, finally, we're off. Let's get this machine going. So this machine, the isobus isn't working right. Basically the isobus for that plough, you wouldn't think a plough has isobus, but they do nowadays. The isobus for that should pop up on the screen, it doesn't. The Fent boy was out having a look at it and it needs plugged in and a software reset or something like that. I'm just figuring out how to drive this thing again. Oh, it's nice, it's comfy. We have made it to field. Right, I've got a box of hat orders here. There's one box gone already. My brother took that, that round to the post office. So anyone who has ordered a hat, thank you very much. And I've worked out that every hat will pay for 0.02% of a new Defender chassis. So if you want to see a new Defender chassis, order a hat. The link is in the description. There's not that many left. A lot of them have gone already. I didn't order huge amounts to start with. And if you hate Defenders and you don't want to see the Defender get a new chassis, don't buy a hat. Also, anyone who's ordered a beef box, 
The hats will come with the beef box, so they'll arrive on Wednesday, the 23rd. The beef box is running till this Sunday, so if you order it by then, um, it'll be posted out on Tuesday. Which, if I can remember, has two sirloin steaks, a kilo of mince, a kilo of diced steak, half a kilo of sausages, one kilo of topside roast, 300 grams of stir-fry strips, and two pork sausage rolls. I've just checked on the stock system, so there's only two white hats left. I think there's maybe three of these yellow ones left. Green ones, there's only two green ones, so... If you want some, be quick. There's it down there. I'll show you the rest of that coon demo tomorrow, but it's heavy, that plough. Very heavy. The tractor's been on two wheels quite a lot. If you're not already, subscribe and like the video as well if you've not. Cheers. Adios.